So thank you, Judy Kopp, for bringing up a great, uh, a great uh, story from the past. That I think a lot of people that watch this channel may not know exactly what, you, what we're talking about when we say rat line. So I'm going to try to explain it in less than three minutes, right? And I'll, I'll do it here because this is the spot that it matters, right? I've, I've filmed here a hundred times before, right? Varazano Bridge, the, the Narrows, the Varazano Narrows, right? It's the Narrows, right? It's the only entrance, I'll show you one more time. It's the only entrance, right, into the New York Harbor. There's actually one other way, a sneakier way around Staten Island, and then there's another way when you go through the Jamaica Bay and you come down into Manhattan. But for the most part, all of the major uh, cargo ships, right, come in this port. Why? Because they're heading to the, they're heading to the port of Newark, right? You see the, the Maersk, Memphis, you see them all. Right now, you don't, there's nothing right now. But if I st stood around a while, I'd see a giant cargo ship go by. And they're usually, they're usually about 100 feet high. That bridge is 250 feet. So it's almost, it's packed with unimaginable, uh, uncountable, it's not unimaginable, it's uncountable amounts of cargo, uh, cargo uh, containers on those ships, right? So what does that have to do with rat lines, right? See everybody, how did, I, I'll propose a question and maybe it'll, it'll be clear. How is it that 700 pounds of heroin ends up in a, in a, in a, in a tenement apartment in Harlem? ready for distribution across the East Coast. And nobody detects it, nobody knows it's there. How, how does it, how does that happen? How is it that, that the flood of arms into places like Afghanistan or uh, uh, other places where, where, where there's a concentration of terrorism, how is it that arms and, and, and this sort of thing ends up in the hand of, uh, hands of the illegals, right? So everybody thinks, let's go to the, to the drug example is that, is that people think that 700 pounds of heroin ends up in, in, in the city because somebody got on a commercial flight with 700 pounds of heroin stuck up their ass, right? Isn't that what taped to their body or, or, or concealed inside of a, you know, a dog or something, right? No, that's not how it happens. Now, the other theory is that it's done through military cover. It is and it isn't. What, what I, see th this theory, I just, Give you a background on the theory, right? And it's not a conspiracy; it's pretty factual. That that commercial um, that that uh, commercial container things, right? Th those are the things that you see stacked on the boats. They're containers where people are doing trade. You, you have, you know, a ship comes in; it's coming from China. It's loaded up with stuff, underwear, socks, whatever it is that they're selling. Chinese stuff, right? Well, wherever it's coming from, right? And, and, and the theory is that our stuff is going the other way, but we don't make anything anymore, right? It's all made over there. It's coming here for sale, right? So, but what people don't know about those commercial flights, those commercial uh, uh, ships, is that they have what's called diplomatic containers. Now, a diplomatic container used to be something that a diplomat, someone who does business, someone from another foreign country that does business with the U.S., Gets the 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 uh, gets a secretive briefcase, and they could put their secret papers in there and not be challenged, right? It's called it was called a diplomatic envelope, right? Under the Obama or Bush or wherever, whenever it happened, it's not really sure when it actually happened, but that that briefcase was expanded to four containers, right? On on a on a cargo ship, four containers of of untouchable, untraceable, unarguable cargo on a, on, a, on a commercial cargo ship, right? It goes right into customs, protected with guns, customs protected. See, that's where the cover comes. But how does somebody get the, the ability to do something like that, right? right? How, how does someone get a diplomatic container where they can ship whatever the fuck they want and it's never detected. That's the CIA. That's what Judy touched on. Now, is it confirmed that it's the CIA? Look, you can't, it's an, if you were to come in here into this harbor with, with anything close to illegal or explosive that is not known by the US government, right? 
like a, a trace of uranium that isn't known or, or, or some kind of contraband that comes into this harbor, you will be surrounded by flying planes and, and, and Coast Guard and, and, and they will shut your boat down and, you, and everybody on the boat will get jailed and, in, in minutes, right? That's how fast it happens. But, but, but if, you know, if a, if a cargo ship comes in and it has diplomatic cover, right? So who gives them the cover? It's politicians, right? Politicians assign or the government, you know, whether it was Obama, whoever the, whoever the senators and congressmen were, that give off these diplomatic uh, envelopes, and that's that's it. So that's what that's what the rat line is all about, because incoming is the, is the drug line, right? And outgoing is quite possibly arms, uranium sale, right? So, right? It's slick. Right? It's not the mil It's not necessarily a military plane flying in and dropping, dropping off 700. I did it in six minutes. I'm sorry. My three-minute explanation in six and a half minutes. So that, that that's what rat lines are, and and how do you stop it? That's that's the final point. I'll let you go. The final the way you stop it is who's funding it? Right? It's again the corporations that give that 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 hire these politicians. And allow them to function. They don't give a shit about, you know, the side. But it's 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 long and convoluted. But who is paying for it? Is it the drug cartels directly? No, it's cartels. I mean, the banking cartel, for example, HSBC. You know, a few years ago, got caught laundering how many billions of dollars in Mexico for drug drug cartels. They were putting money in the bank, but because it's the bank, because it's U.S. bank doing business, all the bankers, they're so fucking professional and so, so, uh, 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 you know, so humane, right? Right? So the banks, you got to shut them down. You got to break them up, right? That's the monopoly, right? They're, 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 they're deeply engaged in all kinds of, as long as it makes money, they don't care about the social ramifications. They don't care about the op opiate crisis in America. They don't give a shit about that. Their kids are in gated communities. They don't care about fucking... You think they give a shit about what goes on in Harlem and people shooting each other and, 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 and trying to make because they're on food stamps and they're trying to make a little money, you know, selling some contraband? They don't give a shit, right? All they care about is the profit. So, so again, raise the corporate tax rate to eighty percent, squeeze them, weaponize the IRS, and stop the stop the bleeding out the top. My name is Marcus Conti, investigative journalist, reporter here on YouTube candidate for the United States Senate. I call myself a bird. I hope you will too. Peace out.